introductions. So I've introduced myself. Um, so this evening I've got support from Glenette Bolsdove. Glenette, do you want to say hi? Hi everybody, good evening, welcome. We've got we've got Mariam Badat, who is our Queen of Chat. Mariam, do you want to say hi? So we also mute. Hi everyone. <laughs> And um, I'm bound to do that at least once this evening, but uh, I, I hopefully I won't might break my record, uh, which is about four or five times. So Josiah Lindsay, who is also doing our polls and is doing our videos. Joe, take it away. I'm here. Hi. Cheers, Joe. Thank you very much. And thank you for all your support this, the support this evening, um, my stuff. OK, so also thank you to all of the scribes and facilitators who have given up their time this evening to help as well. OK, viewing options. Speaker view will show you only the presenter and any other video you have pinned, i.e. BSL interpreter. We have two this evening as well. Um, gallery view will show you all attendees who are in the meeting. Uh, in terms of breaks, obviously, take it when and where you need. Okay, so for BSL users, um, if you use British Sign Language, please pin the video of the interpreter to your screen by hovering your mouse over the video of the interpreter and clicking on the three dots icon that appears on the top right of the video thumbnail. That's as an example here. I will select pin video from the list of options that appear in the menu. Once you've pinned the video, the main video feed on your meeting screen will be that of the interpreter and the presenter. Enable side side mode if you require BSL. That's under view options. When the presenter shares screen slides, click on view options and choose side by side mode. This will be located at the top of your Zoom screen. The shared screen slides will appear on the left and the presenter and the BSL interpreter will appear on the right. And there's a slide separator, which is indicated here. Uh, so there's a slide separator to adjust the size and according to how big you want each each person. Okay. okay, then that's finished. So welcome, welcome to the third Forest Gate Community Neighbourhood Assembly meeting. The purpose of today's assembly is to update you on July's voting round and which projects received a portion of the hundred thousand pounds Forest Gate Community Neighbourhood budget. To update you on what's happened locally across the borough in the Community Neighbourhood Assemblies. To hear directly from some of the Forest Gate project leads to update you on what they will be doing to give you a chance to talk about these projects and what you'd like to see in future assemblies and to let you know about opportunities to get involved in the chosen community projects. So when we talk about the Forest Gate community, now, what we're talking about is um, the two electoral wards of Forest Gate South and Forest Gate North. So they are separated by the train line that runs through from Maryland through to Ilford. Okay, so now we want to hear, hear a little bit from yourself. So we've got three questions. You should be getting some polls that will come up on your screen. So I've got three questions, which are, which ward are you from? Which of the previous assemblies have you attended? And how did you hear about today's assembly? So Joe, please launch the polls. And we'll just give you a minute or so to fill those in. And just to let you know that there's three questions, there is a slide bar on the right. If you can't see the third question, you just scroll down on the slide bar. Okay, Joe, do you think everybody's done or have you got more oh, results coming? It's disappearing off screen. Ah. Have you... I'm just For everyone, I presume. Sorry. For everybody, it keeps going. Okay, if, if it's disappearing from your screen, do you want to just put your hand up? It's okay now. It's okay now. It's okay now. Yeah. Okay, grand. Okay, just let's give another 10 seconds to do that. If you need more time, just call out.
I, I can't get to submit mine. The button doesn't work. Yeah, it won't submit. Oh. It's not good. Let me see from here. Bear me a second. Unfortunately, I don't actually get it my end because I'm a, I'm a host or a co-host, I should say, that it doesn't actually come up on, on my screen. If you haven't answered all questions, you won't be able to click submit. Right, that's helpful. Thank you. So those who can't submit, had you answered all the questions? I had, but they've been knocked off when it disappeared and I hadn't realised that. So that's oh, okay. probably what I'd have. We'll give you a little bit more time. Okay, so I think let let me know. Give a call out if you need a bit more time. Otherwise, we'll uh, we'll have the big reveal. Okay, we're going to end the polls in three, two, one. Joe, can you show the results, please? Okay, so in terms of which ward are you from this evening? We've got forty one percent from Forest Gate North. We got. 38% from Forest Gate South. Uh, there's nobody who's not sure, and there's 22% other. In terms of which of the previous assemblies you attended, 65% came to the assembly in April. That's really high, so thank you for, for still coming. 54% um, came, sorry, that was 65% came in April. 54% uh, came in July. And 30% and of people this will be their first community assembly. So a big warm welcome to you and thank you for, for, for joining the journey. Okay, question three, how did you hear about today's assembly? So we've got 8% on social media, 38% library and the community neighborhoods team, that's good to see. 5% from the uh, Newham website, email, e-newsletter, we've got 46%. And we've got family, friends and neighbors, zero, nobody flyers or posters. That's really interesting, actually. Um, says quite a lot about the effectiveness of uh, our flyers and posters um, and other 8%. Okay, that's really interesting. So thank you very much indeed. Okay, so in terms of, I'll start that again. So maybe I was going a bit fast. So we've got introduction, welcome and housekeeping. We've got welcome video from the mayor. Introduction from neighborhood leads. We've got our working group introduction and update. We've got story so far and the chosen projects, update from project groups, discussions in breakout groups, and we've got volunteering opportunities, next steps, and closing remarks. Okay, so some guidelines for today. These are particularly um, useful for the breakout rooms, um, but listen to each other, be respectful. You don't have to agree. Share what comes to mind. Use the chat window to ask questions or click raise hand under the participant tab and wait for your turn to speak. Take part in breakout rooms when prompted and most importantly, enjoy being part of your community neighborhood. Okay, next we have a video from Diaz, OBE, who's also the lead for inclusive economy and housing delivery. Joe, take it away. Hi everyone and welcome to the third round of community assemblies taking place in your neighbourhood until March 2022. You'll know that the community assemblies are all part of our participatory democracy agenda here at the council which we started back in May 2018 and so much has been going on since then. For example in July we organised the UK's first permanent citizen assembly where local residents came together to discuss how we can make Newham a more greener place place to live to help improve the environment, tackle climate emergency and promote health and well-being for everyone. Through this community assembly, we are involving you as local residents in decision making about how money is being spent in your neighbourhood. Our last round of community assemblies over the summer gave local residents the opportunity to vote online on which projects will be awarded from the £100,000 available to improve local areas across the borough. It was a great success. Success, and 
nearly 200 projects were submitted by residents and community organisations. A total of 82 projects were awarded money following the voting outcome, covering health and wellbeing, improvements to buildings and public areas, and opportunities for people to come together to do good. All those projects will be starting soon and they'll all be completed over the next 12 months. And today's Community Assembly meeting will also provide a more detailed update on those, as well as an opportunity for you to feed back. Here at the Council, we want to make sure that we are constantly improving how we do things with our residents because we want to support vibrant and inclusive communities where everyone has a say. So thank you all once again for your dedication and your commitment and for contributing to what makes Newham so great. I knew I would do that at least once. If there was any disruption you're in because of poor Wi-Fi, etc., then one of my colleagues will be putting the uh, video link, which is a, vid a Vimeo video link, in the chat. So feel free to watch the video again in your in your leisure. Okay, so each community enabled area comprises of a cabinet lead, a deputy cabinet member or commissioner and a co corporate director who will work together on local emerging issues that arise in the neighborhood. They're what's called our community neighborhood leads. Okay, our community neighborhood leads are Jamie Blake, who is the corporate director of environment and sustainable transport, councillor Cannon Ann Easter, who is the commissioner for interfaith and interreligious dialogue, and councillor Shaban Mohammed, who is the cabinet member for housing services. So in terms of introductions, Jamie, do you want to say hello? Yeah, can do, Ian. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, so I'm sure some of you from the poll have, have been here before, so you've heard my introduction. But just to tell everyone what my um, day job is. So I manage all the environmental services for the council. So that's basically um, all the outside stuff, um, excluding housing. So my teams pick up the refuse, um, keep the streets clean. Uh, deal with potholes and highways maintenance, uh, try and make sure the street lights work, um, do all sorts of stuff in um, parks and open spaces. Um, and as well as that, I'm responsible for regulatory services and community safety. So we've got enforcement teams that work for the council, trading standards, uh, food safety, uh, and we manage the uh, registrars and, and cemetery service as well. So there's about 66 million pounds worth of those frontline services that are run for Newham. Uh, we generate about 58 million pounds worth of income as a contribution to those services. Uh, and then in terms of the neighborhood projects that Ian um, mentioned uh, earlier on in his presentation, you've got a range of my staff, predominantly the highways and parks uh, teams uh, that are working with some, uh, some of the residents across all of the council uh, to deliver uh, a number of those projects that are on highways and within my parks and open spaces. Hey. Thank you very much, Jamie. Okay, next, um, Councillor Easter, are you are you online? Yes, here I am. Thank you very hey. much. Over to you. Um, good evening, everybody. It's lovely to be here this evening. We actually live in Forest Gate South, so um, I have sort of two lots of interest here. And part of it is in my role as part of the wider executive to try to support your local councillors as they deal with the issues that come up. So um, we inevitably will be looking at some parking issues this very week. So you can imagine that's a very popular issue to look at. Um, and I'm very pleased to be here this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. And um, Councillor Mohammed, I, are you are you online also? Okay, I'm just checking. I wasn't expecting uh, Councillor Shaban Mohammed, but I was just checking because I can't I can't see the whole the whole room here. Okay, well, thank you to all of you guys for uh, your assistance and all of your all of your wonderful support and help. 
Okay, um, talking of wonderful support and help, this is uh, information about our working group. So I'm going to hand over to Glenette, who's going to introduce this section. Good evening, everyone. The Forest Gate Working, um, the Forest Gate Community, Community Assembly Working Group consists of 16 members. Um, they're listed on the side here, I'll read them out in a minute. And the working group lasts for a whole cycle from April the 20, 2021 to March 2022. The working group members have been involved with shortlisting of priorities and scoring stage one and two project applications to help put projects forward to the voting round for the local community to vote on. The group will now be now also be responsible for monitoring community projects that will be delivered from August 21 to March 2022. And there we have, um, we've got Vicky, Laura, Hugh, Catherine, Law, Lorna, Dawn, George, Susan, Kate, Shaban, Mohammed, Councillor Mohammed, and Easter, Winston Vaughan, Rachel Tripp, Jamie Blake, myself, and Ian. Next slide. Okay, so um, we, we firstly want to say thank you so much for the work and commitment and dedication that the working group members have contributed to this process. They have been very, very good at helping us to analyze and critique processes and things that, that you know, things that of um, the whole working of the working group and the whole process. Um, and we understand that there have been some challenges, but they have made some fantastic suggestions about how we can manage those. And we're really grateful for that. So I want to invite anyone of the working group members who would like to contribute and say something um, to come forward now. I don't know if anybody wants to share a little bit about their experience of being a working group member. I'm, I'm happy to make a comment or two, Lynette, although obviously I'm a, a councillor rather than a, a resident. Is that all right? That's fine. That's fine. Um, I was I was keen to be on the working group um, for all sorts of reasons. Um, partly because I knew that the community assemblies would give Forest Gate residents a chance to bid for money for the kind of projects that people have been talking to me about for years, and I was not at all surprised to see in the projects that were submitted, the focus on the environment, on greening and planting and biodiversity. And that very much echoed the interests and the concerns. Uh, and like I say, and ideas that people have been coming up with for ages. And it's been really interesting to be on the working group. Our role is a strange one because it's really one of oversight. The overall democratic decision still lies with the whole community assembly. Um, but we're there, I guess, to kind of oversee the process by which things move from stage to stage um, and just to provide some kind of some sort of additional democratic assurance, really, to see that things are being done as they should be. Thank you, Councillor Tripp. Is there anybody else that would like to speak? No? Well, thanks again for your contributions, working group. Um, and Ian, I think I'll hand back over to you. Superb, thank you very much, Glenna. Okay, so the next slide is the story so far. Right, uh, where's my laser pointer gone when I need it? There we go. So 65% of you were with, were with us here in April 2021, that's April the 14th, we had our first assembly where we discussed local priorities. Then for the next few months, it was over to co-create. It was the co-create platform we used this year for the first time. Um, between May to June on the platform, you voted on your top three priorities and you submitted project proposals. Then in July 2021, it was the second assembly held on Zoom as we are today and you heard about the project proposals directly from the applicants themselves. In July, you had voting on projects on the co-create platform. And in August, we had the announcement of successful projects and we commenced delivery of projects. And here we are today, as this indicates, assembly three, feedback on progress so far. And the next assembly will be in March, 2022, 
we will talk about project delivery and feedback on the whole cycle. So between November and March, we'll be just monitoring delivery of projects and assisting anybody who needs kind of support with delivery. Okay. Okay, from 16th to 26th of July, 715 local residents voted on a number of projects submitted by voluntary community and faith sector organizations and resident groups. This took place on the Newham Co-Create platform. Now, if you use the platform, you'll, you'll kind of recognize this kind of format here. Um, what this does demonstrate is the budget of 100,000 pounds and the individuals went on and they chose projects up to the value of 100,000 pounds. We had uh, approximately 25 projects and people decided where to uh, attribute the spend. And these were the chosen projects here. I'll quickly explain the sides, uh, slide. So this is the name of the project that was chosen. We've got 12 projects that were chosen. Um, this, there's three different types of projects being, being run. There's those that are being run by the, the voluntary sector organizations, those being run by residents themselves, and they, those which are being run, run by residents, but with the assistance of the council. Um, I'll quickly explain the reason for that. A good example is Odessa, Odessa Park Improvements. So uh, Polly Banwell, who's one of our sort of local residents, she put in a bid for £5,000. You voted for her, she was successful. Um, that was for improvements and new equipment for Odessa Park. However, as a resident, residents can't put in equipment or play equipment, etc., into a park themselves. It needs to be council contractors. So um, Polly is working with us and with internal um, internal departments to oversee that and make that happen. And the people that we're engaging with are members of uh, Jamie's team. So they sit under Jamie, who spoke earlier on. So we're lucky to have Jamie on board as well. Okay, so going through the projects, we had the pro projects chosen were youth-led forest gate planting project. Um, that was awarded £8,000. Creating an environmentally friendly open space, that was awarded £20,000. Creating a new home for the Magpie project and other community groups, that was awarded £20,000. Going green, green the high street, Woodgrange Road and Upton Lane, that was awarded £16,000. Woodgrange Market, a community space, that was awarded £5,000. A new nesting raft and nesting box for ducks in Forest Lane Park that was um, that received three hundred and fifty pounds. Permanent rainbow crossing on Wood Woodgrange Road, LGBT and visibility seven thousand two hundred and fifty pounds. Greening a concrete dominated estate in Forest Gate that was awarded five thousand pounds. Biodiverse corridors that was awarded five thousand pounds as well. Make the most of what we got. That's a tree pet adoption scheme. £3,500, Odessa Park improvements, £5,000, and signposts and trails to playgrounds, £5,000, and that makes up the £100,000 budget. Okay, so these are how the votes were distributed. This is just a, a quick um, demonstration. So we had uh, this particular project here was had 314 votes down to 174 votes, which all of the projects received um, for this type of project substantial amounts of support and the actual engagement through the platform was, was actually really good from sort of my experience. Okay, so what has happened so far? So since projects were chosen at the end of July, the following actions have occurred. Okay, meetings with all applicants to discuss next steps and details for project delivery. Grant agreement forms distributed, agreed and returned. Voluntary community and faith sector organisations have been set up on the council's payment system. Processes, processes for paying individual residents developed with Compost London. Um, I, I should sort of say at sort of this point that, that that process took a little bit longer than we thought. So um, our, uh, especially this particularly impacted on our resident applicants. So um, they've been really, really patient. So our gratitude and thanks goes goes out for them. This is the first time we've we've engaged with this process, a whole new process for us. For us. So it wasn't like everything is ironed out. So again, similar to with the working group who provided fantastic feedback, we are getting feedback from the applicants as well. So that next time during the next round of community assemblies, it'll be a lot, lot smoother. So meeting of green project leads to encourage a joined up approach to greening the urban realm in Forest Gate and internal delivery project groups created and regular meetings, regular meetings taking place to progress projects which require LBN support and delivery. Okay. 
Now it's uh, a juicy bit. Now we're going to hear from our uh, applicants themselves. Let me just get this up on my screen so I can see everybody. I don't believe that all of the applicants are actually, I'm aware that some of the applicants couldn't make it this evening. These are all the applicants here. So I will go through just in case they've managed to make it, um, but don't be surprised if some of them aren't here. So, so as it says here, some of the individuals and organizations whose projects were chosen We'll now give a brief two minute update and tell you about the next steps in their project and how you can get involved. Okay, Laura, do you, are you online? Yes, I am. Yep. yep. Okay. I'm going to hand over to you for a couple of minutes, if that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so um, I put in a bid for Woodgrange Market uh, to have some music and make it a more of a community space rather than just a market to buy and sell things. And uh, we started, we had a little bit of money that we've been using before we get the council money because we wanted to start in the summer. So uh, we put in for, uh, to have music every three weeks and to buy a bit of extra seating and um, to think about um, the future of the market to get a bit more storage. Um, the seating and the storage will be coming later because we can't have the seating without the storage. Um, but the music, we've been having um, different bands since August every three weeks. And it's been fantastic. Um, the musicians have been different in their genres. Uh, so we've had steel pans and we've had um, Balkan gypsy music and we've got... Uh, we've had a local um, band that do cover cover music, rock music, and we've got booked for the rest of this year. We've got an, uh, an opera singer. We hope to have Steel Pans again and, uh, and then another group that does covers. So it's going very well, really. Um, it's been a great success. Thank you. I don't think we've received any money yet, though. Have we? Uh -huh. <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank you very much, Laura. Thank you. It was a question, Ian. <laughs> oh, was it? Okay. Um, have you received money yet? No. I, I, no, okay. <laughs> that's a technical thing, but I, I, yeah. But no, no, you haven't as yet. Um, okay. <laughs> just to maybe explain to some of the residents here. So some of, some of these uh, projects, the money, like I said before, is, um, or the project is being delivered by residents and in conjunction with uh, the London Borough of Newham. Um, so for instance, in the example I gave earlier on with Polly, she's getting funding for playground equipment. So there's there's no point in giving Polly the money um, and going through the process of getting her on the council system, giving her the money because it's gonna have to come straight back to Newham to pay for the contractors. So the money's just sat here. In terms of your one, Laura, it's, it's a bit of a split, isn't it? If you remember, mm, right? mm. some of that money will be paying for the storage, which LBN will put in and the rest will sort of come to you. And I, I think there's a bit of paperwork we need to, we need to do, but it's, it's, it's very close, it's very close. Okay, all right. Okay, okay. That's, that's me done. Okay, thank you very much, Laura. Um, so just to let you know, later on, we are going to talk about how you can get involved in these projects. And I've got contact details for all the projects as well. If something particularly strikes you as interesting, you'd like to get involved in volunteering, we do have details of that later on. So next, Mayana, I believe I saw Mayana online. Yeah. Yes, I'm here. <coughs> Mayana, over to you. Okay. This project is being done through the community garden. But it's quite a separate project to be set up. Um, so we're putting planters down, uh, coupled by Iceland at the end of Woodgrange Road, and then six planters down Upton Lane on the left-hand side. So we've been down to Upton Lane quite a bit, talked to shopkeepers who all say, yes, yes, they're in support of it. Um, we've negotiated with the council as to where the planters will be. This has taken some time, understandably. Uh, we now know where we're going to put them. Uh, we now know the size they're going to be, um, and we're just in the process of, of ord ordering uh, them. The logistics are quite complicated in getting them, then getting them on site, and then putting the compost in. That's going to be a real challenge. Us. We think we'll probably do that in, in January. And there's quite a long lead-in time for getting the planters. Meanwhile, we've got a, a, a leaflet. I don't know if I don't know if it's probably backwards. I don't know if you, you can see it. Uh, there, we designed a flyer like that. Um, to go uh, to all the shops and the houses from um, the road off up to the lane, um, inviting people uh, to volunteer. Uh, we're making sure uh, there's, uh, it's being translated into Urdu and Bengali uh, on the back, 
so hopefully to reach our target market. Um, we start distributing that before Christmas, uh, probably to get an interest uh, group. Um, so that's as far as we've gone uh, so far. Thank you very, uh, very much, Mayana. Okay, Melina, I think I saw Melina online. Hiya. Hey, over um, to you. Thanks. Um, let's see, biodiverse corridors. Uh, we've got probably over 10 different residents that are now um, either have plantings or containers in their front gardens to, um, that have wildflowers, et cetera, in them. And we've got a few more um, that are interested. I made some bug hotels for other people who had plantings already. Uh, I'll try to stop saying um. And the main thing, we had two marquee spots that we were looking at with the original proposal on each side of the bridge over Forest Lane. And since our approval in August, I got notification that, um, Sorry, I just did them again. Uh, uh, Newham is going ahead and doing that project. They already had it in the works for a while, and they're simply waiting on the third party contractors to remove the pavers and to remove the tarmac and pavers that are on the Earlham Grove side and to put, it will be in ground planting. There will be changes made. Some people noticed and let me know on Instagram that there was change afoot and it was the clearing out of all the debris, as some of you know, on each side of the urban growth spot in those gated areas. So those two locations will be converted to in-ground planting, and that will be outside of the biodiverse corridors project. So the funding that we have is now going more towards the front garden residence program. So like the bug hotels are much easier to do, and I can get the supplies and that are needed to make those happen, as well as looking at containers for, luckily we've had quite a few people from Seabird. We did a flyer and uh, they were distributed on all of the roads that were listed on the original proposal. And like uh, Seabird, which many of you know, has lots of parking on the front garden. Um, they've come back and interested, but we've had to use containers. So- Just to let you know, you've got about 30 seconds, Melina, if that's okay. So it's all moving in the right direction. And like everyone else, we're waiting for money. All right, <laughs> that's all I have to say. Thanks so much. And Ian will give you information if you're interested in volunteering. Yeah. Thank you yeah. very much, Melina. Um, Amy, Amy Ross, that's not Amy Rosser. So Amy Rosser, don't panic. Um, Amy Rosser, you happen to be online? I wasn't expect Amy to be online today, um, but just in case you're there, want to say anything about the Magpie Project. Okay, um, moving on, Chigo, over to yourself. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, so the, our project is to create an env environmentally uh, open space around uh, Emmanuel Church. Uh, Emmanuel Church is the church just by uh, Barclays Bank uh, at a very, very prominent place. Uh, the whole point of it is to have a place where people can come and uh, find uh, restful and find uh, welcoming. Um, <clears throat> there is quite a, a process that is, uh, has to be gone through before we start. We have to get uh, permission from the sort of the wider Church of England and we're going through that. There's two stages in that process and we've been through one of those uh, successfully. Uh, we're not expecting uh, any problem. It's just a process uh, that takes time. We also had to ins inform our insurers who are happy uh, for the work to happen. So we're kind of going through the process through that needs to be got through before the work happens. The thing to report is that every, every stage of that process has gone through uh, successfully. Uh, the one thing to say is that the work that is being financed by this scheme is um, the space between the church and Romford Road, uh, which is we want to make attractive, but we're also using it now to want to transform the whole of the churchyard. So we're actually thinking bigger. We're using this particular project as a launching pad for making the whole churchyard uh, redeveloped and much more attractive. Uh, we would hope that people in the community, uh, all of you listening will want to support this. We'll be looking for volunteers, uh, both in terms of the conception, but also in terms of the running and the maintenance of this space. And we're, we're doing uh, some more fundraising 
so that we can have money to add to what we are getting from Newham Council. And it'd be wonderful if we can get the support of this community assembly for our fundraising. Thank you. Chigo, thank you very much. Okay, Shofa, are you online this evening? Okay, no? Um, Hi, okay. sorry, Ian, oh. I am. <laughs> Apologies, Shofa. That's okay. I'm just, um, well, I don't even know if I can switch my camera on or not. Yeah, we can see you. Uh, yeah, so I, I'm just a bit um, lost here. Am I supposed to give feedback or...? Um, no, it's really just talking about um, your project and the next steps and what what's happening in future and how people can get involved if that's appropriate. Yep, sure. So I'm still at Woodbench Market um, on Saturdays um, uh, with a group of young people. We're still continuing with our old kind of campaign of giving out free self-care items and um, signposting about mental well-being. Um, unfortunately, I still haven't had the funds through, but the project plans had to be amended a little bit. Originally, we were going to do planters uh, uh, through Newham. I think we can still do some element of that, but the volunteers are ready. Um, the shopping um, baskets are ready. It's just about getting that through to the Oracle and having that account um, authorized um, and have the money in so we can start the project. Um, that's where we're at. And we can, I mean, I don't, because we're work, working with young people, I wouldn't rush into getting a lot of adult volunteers because we've got to make sure the right safeguarding is in place. But at the moment, I have a couple of adults that are um, DBS checked and it's just waiting to be picked up really. So that's where I am, if that's okay. That's perfect. Thank you, Shofa. Thank you. Um, Gregory, are, are you online this evening? Or Les and Len, who are also from the Conservation Volunteers? No. Okay, moving on. Um, I believe Rob, Rob DeRoche, I believe I saw you earlier. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. Over to you, Rob. Okay, thanks. Um, right, there are Rainbow Crossing. Um, for Woodgrange Road. Uh, we're looking at the spot that's directly outside of the station that crosses the road uh, on Woodgrange Road. Um, I had a really successful meeting uh, with Murray Woodburn about um, basically the logistics of, you know, the paint that's required, you know, for a permanent rainbow crossing. All the ones in the past have been temporary paint. Um, the cost of permanent paint is a lot more uh, money. So we were looking at that. The next phase for us is design, um, how we're going to design it, you know, and how, it, how is it going to fit within, you know, uh, highways and roads, you know, legislation and all that sort of thing. So um, that's sort of the next phase for us, where, where we're at with that. Um, we're hoping uh, to have something on the pavement or on the on the road rather um by our next big pride event which will be next summer so um murray seems to reassure us that that's a possibility so yeah that's where we're at okay rob thank you very much and it's it's worth me sort of mentioning at this point that um you may have picked up that there has been some delays in payments and distribution of payment and you may be thinking about how how is it that these projects can then be delivered by the end of the cycle in march 2022 but um just to say we have got agreement that if projects need to roll over into the next financial year and need more time then that's okay in terms um of forest gate pride rob correct me if i'm wrong but that's usually in june so it'll be june 2022 yeah, that's right. June that's 2022. Right. So we're, we're, one of the issues um, was not just getting the money to pay for it, but also getting it on to the roadworks uh, timetable in order for them to, to get it to put onto the ground. So uh, it takes quite a while to get things done because there's so many things they have to do. Perfect. So there's some good news there in the fact that if more time is needed, then that's OK. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, okay, Laura Laker. I don't believe Laura is making it this evening, but quick call out in case she is online. 
Nope. Um, Zara, I know, couldn't make it this evening. Um, so Zara's projects make the most of what we what we've got. That's actually a tree pit adoption adoption uh, program. Um, quite an interesting one, and I know she started um, some of the tree pit adoptions um, close to where she is on sort of Station Road, but is keen for people to step forward and volunteer. So we will have uh, contact details about how you can get involved shortly. Um, Polly, Polly Banwell, uh, Polly, are you online? No. Okay. And then Suzanne. Hi, I'm here. Hey. Suzanne, can you over okay? to you. Yeah, can you hear me okay? Perfect. Um, so thanks to everyone who voted for my project, um, which will raise awareness of a pocket playground by way of um, colourful signpost and a colourful pavement trail um, from an appropriate local business. Um, for those who aren't familiar, a pocket playground is a smaller playground, usually in a dense residential area. Um, and through research and lots and lots of playground visits over the summer, um, I identified six pocket playgrounds in the Forest Gate North and South boards. And um, scoring on a variety of factors, um, Eric Road Playground um, scored the highest. Um, for those who don't know where that is, that's, it's kind of off Station Road. Um, it's in the um, Forest Gate North board. Um, I've already spoken to um, the Wild Goose Bakery, which is located very closely to the playground. Um, they're already strongly involved in the local community and they have agreed to participate in highlighting the playground. And um, knowing the area pretty well, I really wanted the trail design to reflect the, um, the significant Afro-Caribbean community there. And I'm thrilled that a lady called Nadine Prophet has joined the project. Um, she's part Guyanese. She's a long-term forest gator. She designs vibrant clothing using her cultural references. Um, and I can pop her Instagram in the chat function after this if anyone's interested in checking her out. Um, she and I have been tinkering with her initial designs to present them to New and Council and their highways contractor so we can discuss the practicalities of turning them into the actual trail so the logistics the costings the materials um, and agree the amendments and once we have the agreed designs a focus group will choose the eventual design um, i've been working closely with Cher Sudin at newman council throughout particularly on devising initial designs for the signs part of the project um, we've had an initial meeting with the highways contractor um, and he's confirmed that our budget and timeline seem realistic so far. Uh, and we're scheduled to have a similar meeting with the signage contractor this week. So if all goes to schedule, um, I'd like to form the focus group by the end of this month and have the design chosen by the end of this year, ready to implement early next year. Um, in terms of public help, I'm interested to hear from those who live in this one housing managed estate surrounding the Eric Road playground to be on that focus group. Um, I do know some people who live there already and I also have good links to Swan Housing who can contact every resident for us but it'd also be great to use this platform to reach out to if anyone is out there. Um, that's my update. Fantastic, thank you very much Suzanne. Okay, so now, now it's over to you guys. So now it's time for breakout groups. Um, we've got two questions in uh, the break breakout groups. Um, what did you find interesting or exciting about the projects you heard from? And if there are any project representatives in the breakout rooms, feel free to ask them questions. And number two, what would you like to hear or do in future community assemblies? So Glenette, are you ready to um, launch yeah, breakout ready. rooms? Ready, ready, go. Okay, moving on. Okay, so thank you for all your discussion and feedback in the, uh, the breakout group. And apologies, apologize for any um, disjointedness. The jam boards with the comments from each group will be made available to everyone on the Forest Gate Community Assembly section of the Newham Co-Create website. 
And we'll also be looking at all of your comments and ideas to help design the next round of assemblies taking place in 2022. I should say that there is a feedback form and there's a, there's a link, there's a feedback link we're gonna give you at the end. If there's anything you weren't able to say during the breakout room, please add it to the link there. So it's, you haven't lost the opportunity to, um, to put forward your ideas for future assemblies in, under consideration. Please just add it to the, um, the feedback form. Okay, we're on to um, volunteering opportunities. So uh, as I said earlier on, lots of these projects have volunteering opportunities. Um, I should say, if you want, you can take a screenshot of these next, we've got three slides. Uh, if you're interested, take a screenshot or take a photo, but also in about a week's time, this whole presentation will be on UM Co Create. So even if you don't manage to get all the details from this evening, it will, again, it will be on Co Create. So you can get, get the information from there. Okay, so Woodgrange Market, a community space. If you're interested in volunteering for the Woodgrange Market, please contact woodgrangemarketplace at gmail.com to discuss further. Green the High Street, Woodgrange Road and Upton Lane. If you're interested in volunteering for this project, please contact plantinguptonlane at gmail.com to discuss further. Biodiverse Corridors. If you're interested in volunteering for this project, please contact info at newham-meadows.org.uk. Creating an environmentally friendly open space. If you're interested in volunteering for this project, please contact chigor.chike at sky.com. Youth, youth led forest gate as Schoffer mentioned earlier on it's not necessary I mean they don't want too many um, adult volunteers just because um, of uh, safeguarding but if you want to talk more about being involved in the project if that sounds like something you think you can help out with by all means um, you can contact uh, my team cn.forestgate at newham.gov.uk and we can take the conversation further and I can put you in touch with Schoffer a new nesting raft and nesting box for ducks in Forest Lane Park. If you're interested in that or you want, want more information about the Newham Conservation Volunteers who do a lot of work in Forest Lane Park, please contact cn.forestgate at newham.gov.uk. A permanent rainbow crossing on Woodgrange Road, LGBT and visibility. Again, if you're interested in volunteering for this project, um, please contact cn.forestgate at newham.gov.uk and we can uh, put you in touch with the relevant people. Greening a concrete dominated estate in Central Forest Gate, if you're interested in this project, again it's cn.forestgate at newham.gov.uk and we'll put you in touch. And last three, so most of what we've done. If you're interested in volunteering for this project, this is the tree pit adoption scheme. So if there's a tree pit close to you and you, you think uh, you'd be interested in um, adopting, adopting the, uh, the tree pit, then by all means, email cn.forestgate at newham.gov.uk. You can also follow the project on Instagram at, at the flower starter. Okay, Odessa Park Improvements, if you're interested in this one, again, cn.forestgate at newham.gov.uk. And signposts and trails to playgrounds. If you're interested in volunteering for this project, please contact cn.forestgate at newham.gov.uk and I can put you in touch with uh, uh, Suzanne who spoke earlier. Okay, some other key messages, um, new recycling service, we've got some information. Ruma, are you online? Yes, I am. Okay, Ruma, can I hand over for you? I don't have any slides for you, unfortunately, but if you could um, give a little bit of background information for a couple of minutes, I'm going to hand over to you. Okay, is it okay for me to share slides? Um, or, yes, I mean, I can give you maximum about two minutes, Ruma, but if, if you can share slides in that time, that's absolutely fine. Okay, thank you, Ian. Okay, let me okay. find you. I, th I think I'll have to make you co-host. Okay, then no, no worries, no worries. I will just go through it. Okay, okay brilliant. So, thank you. Um, my name is Ruma Jana. I'm from the uh, Waste and Recycling team. So um, I am here to just say about our new upcoming recycling changes. So from 15th of November in Newham, all the residents, we can now recycle glass in your recycling bin, um, aluminum foil and tins, you can recycle in, in your recycling bin, aerosols that should be empty and not cracked or anything. So that you can recycle in your bin. And also the yogurt, like plastic pots, tubs and trays. So these are the four things that you can, uh, 
recycle from 15th of November in your household recycling bin. So that is the main update from me. And also you must have known that we are looking forward for weekly recycling. But as of now, due to the shortage of HGV drivers, we won't be able to do that at this moment, but it has been approved and we will, as soon as the recruitment has been done, we are going to go for it. So that's the update for me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ruma. Short and sweet, love it. Okay, Ian, so. Ian, yes. we, have a few, we have a few messages in the chat. A few um, questions or a few comments in the chat. Okay, go for it, Glenette. Right. Do you want to read um, them out? Yes, um, just one second. There's I a comment that the assembly, yeah, somebody Are these saying, messages about the recycling service? No, 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 no. But I mean, they're not about the recycling service, but I don't know when you want, if you want to take um, questions in the chat. Okay, let, let, let's do that now then. Yes, please go for it. Right, the, um, a few comments around the, the use of the time, um, but um, one, one says, um, can we plan a celebrate to get together in person next summer where we can share the successes of the projects, which by then will be launched. That's one good idea. Um, somebody said that um, they would like to have spent more time talking. The presentations were just, there were yep. just a, a few, few too many presentations. Yeah. Um, Okay, and somebody said they'd like to hear about projects where there were no sp spokespeople. So, um, I don't know how we can go and uh, go about that. Perhaps um, we can circulate something to people later on on that. If, you know, if there were no, if there was no one to represent a project. Um, Yeah, I think those are the things that we can actually deal with now. Other things seem that maybe we'll have to respond at a later date. Okay. I believe um, Mariam asked me a question earlier on about some funding alloc allocation, but um, that again, Mariam, if you get the sort of contact details, we can answer those questions um, kind of after the meeting because I don't think we have the information right now. But again, if you've got any questions, any remarks, anything at all, please put in the uh, feedback form. I think Marion is going to put the feedback link in the chat very shortly. Okay, now back to um, the, the slides. So local plan promotion. So there is a review of the local plan, which has um, a great impact on local sort of planning and how the and how the your local neighbourhood and how the town centre is is managed and, and the planning implications going forward. And um, there's a really, really good um, YouTube video where you can watch and it explains it all much better than I ever could. So uh, there is a link here and I believe Mariam is gonna put that in the chat. And if you want more information, you can contact dominic.barnett at newham.gov.uk. Okay, last one, levelling up fund. Um, there is a press release here. Again, the link will be in the chat. It's quite interesting. So Newham has just been awarded £40 million for some urban real improvements. Some of those will affect Forest Gate. There'll be more information in that in future. This is very new news. It's very good news. Um, but if you want to know a little bit more, then again, that link will be in the chat. Okay, it's next up. Tell. So, next step, give any further feedback on the process by visiting Co Create and look out for updates between now and the next meeting on www.newhamcocreate.gov. Sorry, .co.uk. That's www.newhamcocreate.co.uk. So the next community assembly will take place in March 2022 when you will be able to get updates on the progress of the projects and give feedback on the whole assembly cycle. And as I've mentioned before, please do give us your feedback on today's assembly and on in regards to the assembly process um, as a whole by completing our short feedback form. The link will be posted in the chat by Mary. Okay, there's a contact out to myself and my team. Um, this is me, I'll leave that here for a while. If you want to take a screenshot or take a photo, um, the contact details here are for myself, uh, Ian Martin, Community Neighbourhood Manager for Forest Gate, and Glenette Bolsdorf, the Community Neighbourhood Senior Officer for Forest Gate. And there is also general inquiries, uh, contact details for the Forest Gate Community Neighbourhoods team who are based at Forest Gate Library. So I'll just leave that for, for a few seconds, but like I said earlier on, that will be on the new and co-create platform by next week anyway. Okay, um, Councillor McLean, are you online? 
I am, yes. Fantastic. Am. Am nice to have you here, so I'm going to hand over to Councillor Charlie McLean, who is the Deputy Mayor, Statutory and Cabinet Member for Resident Engagement and Participation. Hi, uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you, Ian. Um, I'll, I'll keep my remarks short because I know that we're running slightly over time. Um, but, you know, it's, it's, it's always difficult being the first um, neighbourhood within the round. Um, and the feedback that you've given this evening will be really is really useful for the, the, the following ones. Um, to, to take into consideration the different things that you said about, you know, too much presentations, hearing more from each other, that sort of thing. Um, so thank you so much for that. Um, it's really exciting to hear the projects, um, how they've progressed, and apologies about the, the funding issue, but as Ian said, it, it's nearly been, been resolved. Um, I just wanted to um, say that, sorry, my daughter's distracting me. Um, I just wanted to say thank you so much for everyone for, for coming. And I did note the comments earlier on about people not necessarily having access um, to their own devices at home, etc. But, you know, we do have devices in the libraries and people are able to, to go in and to have assistance to, to log into the meeting and to participate that way. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll leave it there. Um, she just said sorry for making the noise. Um, and thank you very much, everyone. Have a safe journey home if you're not already there. Thank you. Thanks, Charlene. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Apologies, we've uh, run slightly over time. So thanks again for coming. And um, please do fill out your feedback forms. And we will see you next time. Um, just to let you know, we are based in Forest Gate Library. So if you ever want to come and see us in person, we're, we're generally always here. So. Thank you very much and good luck. That's one thing, Ian. If anybody would like to receive the Forest Gate newsletter, um, I think uh, my colleague's going to put that in the, the link in the chat so you can actually sign up yourself. Okay, fantastic. Um, yeah. You can also, there is the option of joining that on the uh, feedback form as well. So um, don't worry if you don't manage to grab the link. It should it's be. It's an e copy. In, yeah, yeah it, sh it should be in the chat, but. Um, if you click on the link, which is in the chat for the for the feedback form, you can also request it there as well. Okay, well, thank you very much all. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Night, night.